Jora resurfaces in Volantis, drinking in a brothel and shamefully eyeing a whore dressed as Daenerys. From afar, he recognizes Tyrion Lannister and Varys. Jorah later approaches Tyrion while he is urinating alone and binds him with rope and gags him, telling Tyrion that he is taking him to, the Queen. With Tyrion captive, Jorah steals a small boat and begins to sail east towards Marine. En route, Tyrion pesters Jorah with muffled whining until he relents and removes Tyrion's gag. Tyrion notices that they are traveling east and not west towards Cersei in King's Landing. Jorah reveals that he is taking Tyrion to the queen he serves, Daenerys Targaryen. Tyrion is pleasantly surprised and tries to convince him that they are on the same side since he was traveling to meet Daenerys anyway. He also accurately deduces who Jorah is by his appearance and equipment. He also correctly assumes that Jorah must have been banished by Daenerys because she discovered that he was spying on her for Varys. Tyrion mockingly asks Jorah if he really believes that he will earn a pardon for simply delivering him to Daenerys. Alternately, she might pardon Tyrion and behead Jorah instead. Fed up with his captive, Jorah knocks Tyrion across the face, leaving him unconscious. As Jorah and Tyrion continue their journey, Tyrion continues to mock House Mormont, as well as Bear Island. Eventually the two find Old Valyria, and passes through its ruins to find Marine. While sailing through the ruins the two look in astonishment as they see Drogon fly past them. In a quick turn of events, men infected with Grayscale appear and attack the two. Jorah manages to fight them off, but Tyrion is pulled underwater. When Tyrion wakes up, he finds himself on shore, saved by Jorah. Jorah and Tyrion continue but Jorah looks at his wrists, and notices he has been infected with Grayscale. Jorah and Tyrion continue towards Marine on foot, having failed to acquire a boat. During conversation, Tyrion mentions to Jorah that he knew his father, Jor Mormont, from his trip to the war, and reveals that he was killed by his own men in a mutiny while returning from a great ranging, leaving Jorah visibly saddened at his father's death. Jorah is also pressed by Tyrion for information as to why he is serving Daenerys in the first place. Jorah tells him that he grew to truly believe in her when he saw her emerge from Khal Drogo's funeral pyre unscathed with three dragon hatchlings, and that she also has a birthright to the throne, even though Tyrion mentions the infamous Targaryen madness that may surface in her later in life. Later on, they are found and captured by slavers. The leader, Malco, plans to sell them in Volantis, but Tyrion convinces them to allow Jorah to participate in the fighting pits in Meereen to make them rich offering the information that Jorah once unseated Jaime Lannister in a jousting match. When Malco scoffs this, Jorah brings up that he slew Kotho in single combat, inciting Malco's interest and convincing him to take them to Marine. On the outskirts of Marine, Jorah is put on auction by Malco, who exaggerates Jorah's accomplishments by claiming that along with fighting alongside the Stag King, he took part in the attack on Spike with his flaming sword when it was really Thoros of Myr, single-handedly killed Khal Drogo, and was betrayed by his wife and willingly sold into slavery in order to repay his debts. A slaver, Yezan Kagas, buys both Jorah and Tyrion. They are taken to one of the fighting pits. When Jorah learns that Daenerys is present for the opening of the games, he takes a sword and enters the arena, knocking out the other fighters while disguised with a helmet. Jorah approaches Daenerys and removes his helmet to reveal his identity but Daenerys, who still hasn't forgiven him, orders Jorah to be taken away. Jorah informs her that he has brought a gift, and Tyrion reveals himself, meeting Daenerys face to face at last. Back in Marine, Daenerys, after learning Tyrion wants to advise her, asks him what he thinks she should do with Jorah. Tyrion tells her how devoted Jorah seemed to be to her and that he did not think she would be wise enough to forgive him. He then tells her how killing people devoted to her is not a ruler who inspires devotion and that she would need lots of it if she was ever going to rule Westeros, but when she did he couldn't be by her side. Daenerys then orders Jorah removed from the city once more. Jorah, with his grayscale slowly progressing, returns to the fighting pits where Yezan Kagas remains. Since he won the earlier match Jorah demanded that he fight at the great pit in front of the queen. Jorah says he is the best he has and that if he wins he will belong to Yezan. Jorah later joins the great games in Dizonak's pit in front of the queen, along with a water dancer from Bravos, a Dothraki warrior, a summer islander with a halberd, a Miranese champion wielding a spear, and another fighter. When Daenerys recognizes Jorah she is visibly distraught, 
and as the fighting continues and Jorah is severely wounded by the water dancer, Tyrion reminds Daenerys that she could stop the fight at any moment to save Jorah. Even though the fear is clearly shown on her face, Daenerys refuses. Jorah manages to win the fight despite being outmatched. Just as the fight ends, Jorah throws a spear towards Daenerys, who, believing the spear was meant for her, ducks out of the way. The spear strikes a son of the harpy who was sneaking up behind her. Much of the audience reveals themselves to be sons of the harpy, proceeding to kill everyone they can. Jorah joins the ensuing battle for Daenerys and tries to help escort her out of the fighting pit, but they eventually end up surrounded and vastly outnumbered. At that moment, Drogon appears in the arena and starts killing the sons of the Harpy and scaring off the rest. Jorah, Tyrion, Dario and Missande all observe in awe as Daenerys flies off on Drogon, the first Targaryen dragon rider in over 150 years. Back in the Great Pyramid, Tyrion addresses both Jorah and Dario's feelings for Daenerys, understanding how one could love the wrong woman. The three argue about Jorah's betrayal, but they will not make any judgments without Daenerys first. The dragon was seen taking her north and it is agreed that Jorah will join Dario to ride and search for her. Grey Worm, still recovering from his injuries, offers to go with them, as does Tyrion. Dario firmly nixes both ideas. Grey Worm is needed to command the Unsullied in keeping the city under control, while Tyrion is the only one of them to have any political experience. Thus, Dario and Jorah depart together, hoping to find their queen in the Dothraki Sea.